Hi, in this video we're just going to go through creating a component, specifically a uh, somatic component um, and at the same time we're going to create the schematic symbol as well as the um, model part as well. So I guess um, I've started off here, uh, Siemens is really good on their website, you can actually um, download everything which is great. Um, so I've downloaded a few different things, um, be it the schematics, um, the image, a um, step file and a bit of a few other things anyways so um once i've done that essentially i just got to create a few different things so if i open my um e3 database editor um so with this one i essentially need to create uh <coughs> excuse me uh four different symbols um i need to create a preview symbol a um well the way i've set it up anyways uh, a preview symbol uh, a um, schematic portion for the output, schematic portion for the input, and I've also created a master one. So um, I'm setting this up so it's option to do a um, to place it as a full symbol. At the same time, you can do it as an individual as well. Uh, the other thing I need to do is a model. Uh, in the model, um, I've got the front view as well as the side view, and I've also got a step file in there as well. Um, which is this one here. So with the model view anyways, uh, you can create exclusion zones and, and mounting and a few other things. And once I'm all done with that, I pretty much bring it all into a uh, component and I link up the, um, the signal logic as well and assign the pins uh, as appropriate. So I guess um, we'll start off with the, the easiest one, I guess, with the symbols. Um, in most cases, you want to start with the symbols and, and do the um, component last. So the first thing I'm just going to do, right click, new symbol. Um, so in my new symbol here, I'm just going to rename it. Um, and I'll do that, and I'll, uh, that's the part number, the 6EP, and I'll call it preview. So I'm going to create a preview symbol. Preview symbol is the easiest. Uh, all you really do is go import, image, uh, find that one, click on resize image, and then uh, import it, just draw a box. Um, rotate it if you've done it wrong, like so. And you've essentially got that. So I'll need to click a fit space requirement. This one's automatically going to do it for me. And then I'm pretty much ready to go. I can actually go to my symbol properties now. Right click symbol properties. Um, I can add any information. This is basically where it's going to be located. Um, so the structure is going to show the class and description. Um, these are the options for the classes. Um, you know, power supply, whatever else. Um, you know, it's a good opportunity to start locating things in your own folder. Um, if you just type in anything, uh, it will come up there. So I'll just do, um, let's say, created, uh, created symbols, and I'm just going to give it the um, preview image, just the name. So here I can actually change the graphic if it's a fixed replicate or a dynamic. So basically, the fixed is just gets placed on that one. Dynamic, I can stretch it larger or smaller, or replicate, which doesn't apply in this case. It's obviously if it's a repeating pattern. The rest is okay, it's just a normal type, it's pretty easy, you can click OK and then I can save the database and click OK. So once I've done that, if I click on my symbol tab, you'll see that, that the, um, oops, uh, that created symbols, uh, and I'll have that one there. So I guess the benefit of having this created symbols is a differentiation between having the ones that come in the database and the ones that you've added. Uh, the database might have a fair bit. At the same time, if you want to keep it all in the same position, uh, you can put it in the, the, um, the same location as the other ones, the similar components anyways. Um, ideally, you'd get an existing component, make a modification of, but I just want to go through starting from scratch um, so we can cover everything. So the next thing I want to do is create a, a schematic symbol, um, just the main one anyways. So if I go right-click, a new symbol, it'll bring up the uh, new... Um, sheet. So I'll move the origin over. This is the origin here and then place it over here. Um, I'm just going to draw a box. If I use the bottom left, I can draw a rectangle and place it there. Uh, to assist me, I'll place the grid on um, just so I can see a little better. Just clean that out. Um, so with that, uh, a couple things. Um, I've got my grid set up quite well uh, where you can see the snapping is actually sitting on the, the grid points. Uh, for each particular thing. 
Now if you click S for your settings uh, and go into your symbol, um, you want this to be uh, matching. So the grid points 4 mil, working size 4 mil. You can change it to 2 if you want. I stick to 4, uh, but that's essentially the spacing of the, um, the nodes and the connection points. So if you stick to that, then it will um, maintain consistency. Uh, okay, so uh, what I'll do first is I'll place the component of the uh, top nodes. Uh, so if I go here, nodal direction, um, I just find the one that says uh, node from bottom, node from top rather. If I click on this button, rather than placing individuals, multiple nodes, I can select horizontal and say there's three horizontally and this node from top, there's space that four mil apart. I can click OK and I can place the nodes that way. You can see automatically it's got one, two, three that are placed. I can do the same for the bottom. If I do uh, click on this button, change that to node from bottom, and there's four at the bottom, and click OK, and place them here. So I guess um, you know you can manipulate it as you need. In this case, I want to move them over. Uh, I want to make this a bit smaller, and I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Yeah, you can start to manipulate it as you would need. I guess to minimize spacing, etc. Um, so one thing with this, it's got the loop back. Um, so I'm just going to draw a line just to represent that. Uh, just to say, if I can double click, it'll let me continuously draw. So that one, that one. So this is basically going to let me just, uh, and it's press escape when you're done, uh, just to say that this pin's connected to that one, that one's connected to that one. Uh, I want to put a text fix to show, so if I pre press um, up here, I can place an attribute, but specifically I just want a text fix. So press A and I can just say this is L plus. Uh, L plus. And then there's an M. So I want to move that one just slightly off. So like I said, because it's snapping to the 4 mil, if I hold down my control button, it's going to let me deviate from that four. My alternate grid set at one millimeter increments. Um, so I can place it just here. And the other one's the M. Um, in the, oops. That's the, um, from Siemens anyways, the actual schematic that they've recommended. Um, there's also these as well. Um, so you can copy something off. So you've got the L plus and there's the M as well. So. Um, the next one I want, I can actually just copy Control C, Control V, and place it here. If I double click on that, I can just change it to M and click Apply. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to do is place um, other text placeholders. So I want to have a part number, I want a device designation, uh, any other attributes that you want to show. So if I go here and I go to my uh, my, oops. device designation and you can choose your alignment etc uh, so I place my device designation here I'll also want my component code component code and any other um, technical description uh, that you might want in there. In this case, I know it's the Somatic S7-1500. Um, you can add that as a technical description or something like that, uh, which you can do. So any any attribute that you want um, to get called out, you can do so. So I'll set that as a technical data, for example, and I'll place that one here as well, uh, like so. Uh, with these, the Xs, so if you want to change them, you can actually press the um, display type and it'll actually show you the type, not necessarily. Um, what it is, I guess. The X is going to be the locator. So I guess these ones I can move up a little bit uh, if you want to be a bit more space conscious. Like so. So it's going to stick to the left. Um, in this case, I want to make my device designation a little larger. I can go to 3 mil. Okay. It's going to hit up something like that. Um, we'll go from here and then we'll add to it if we need to. Um, so I can add symbol properties again, the class. Uh, I'm just going to call it my created symbols. And I can scroll down or just type it again created symbols. 
uh, it's just a null type and it's going to be a fixed um, I'm just going to name the pins here um, just for simplicity's sake so pin number one is L1 N PE if I hit apply you'll see they change and then one two three four for these ones technical data I'll leave that it's just going to get called upon the actual compiler itself so I click OK and then you've got that so I guess um, you know we can break it down uh, the other thing I need to do is place the origin again so the origin is essentially where it gets placed when I'm holding the cursor if the origin was here for example when I place the component it would sit in that fashion it'd be to the um, to, to the right and upper of, of my crosshair um, but you can have it in the middle you can have them where whichever way you want essentially and the next thing I need to do is this uh, fit space requirement and then again it's going to be the selection area of that uh, you can actually drop out the pins if you don't want to um, but then it's completely up to you so I guess with this one if we wanted to minimize that we could push this down a little bit go from there um, but I'm happy with that I can right click save this to database and click OK uh, so the next one I need to do I forgot to rename lovely So I'm just going to rename that, press F2, paste uh, 6EP1333-1. Just copy that. And I'm going to call it um, main schematic. And then save the database. And then it'll be added to the database. So I'll just get rid of that one just because I. So now that I've got the main one, I want to create another one, a smaller one. Uh, the easier thing, what I can do is I can just go right click new, sorry, wrong one, right click new here. Um, so when I click new, uh, it's going to essentially copy the graphics as well as the any um, symbol properties in there, you know, pin names, etc. Um, so what I can do is to say I want to do the input version or the, the uh, input path. Um, I can go here, I can delete that, I can bring this up, um, I can give it a text fix. Um, I'll call it input and I'll place it here. So if I drop it to the X, my text fixed, place it there. Um, I can actually move this around as well. So this one is my um, component code, technical data. So I can actually move that across here if I want to make it a bit smaller again. Um, what I can do, oops, is that aligned? Yep, I can double click on it and I can do it alignment right um, on that one as well. So it sits there on the right. If you wanted to, obviously, you could minimize it a little bit more, but you can go from there. So I'll drop that line, and I'm pretty much happy with um, what I've got. Move the origin, fit space requirement, change my name, call it input schematic, and right click save the database. So in a similar fashion again, if I go to the main one, right click new, I can drop these down. If I hold shift, you can select multiples. I'll bring them down here. I don't want this stuff shown. I can clear that out. You know, it's up to you what you want to show, what you don't. I can get rid of that as well, move that across. Um, bring that up here. Again, change that to alignment right. And have a text fix. Output. that line out so 
safe with the database. Excellent. So I guess um, I've got my symbols. And of course, I forgot to rename it again, which is lovely. I can go right click new. It's going to copy everything. Uh, all I need to do is rename this one uh, paste output schematic. Save the database. And I'll get rid of that one that I named incorrectly. So um, a couple of things I can do now, I can bring in the model now, or I can create the model now, or I can bring it, um, I'm just going to create the model. You could potentially create the component now and then add the model once you've done that, but I'm just going to do the model and add it all at once. Um, so with the model, if I right click on a folder, new model, it's going to have a blank. Um, the easiest thing I find to do is um, just, just resize it here. Um, and then I can go to my graphic properties and graphic information and it'll let me place um, a few things there. Uh, to begin with, if I just place the origin down here, it's going to make life a little easier. And graphic properties and graphic information. So essentially we've got our width, our height, and we can probably ignore the um, this one at the moment. So with the width, height, if I go to my uh, DWG, you can see here it's 75 mil wide and it's 147 high. So if I go um, 75, 75, 147, 14, oops, 4.7, hit apply, and now I've got it to the right size. So um, I can move this across, move it down rather. And what I might do is I might change my sheet size because I can see I'm going to run out of space pretty quickly. So if I right click, sheet properties, um, change DNA to day three to DNA two, hit apply. Uh, you can see it's um, the biggest sheet space. Uh, you can do as big as you want essentially, but I'm just going to do that. And then I'll place that origin there. Oops, I'll actually place it in the corner this time. And then we've got our, our outline. Um, so I guess the next thing I need to do here is place the DWG in it. Uh, with the DWGs, there's a couple things that I like to do. If I go new symbol, and uh, this new symbol 5, what I normally do is, um, first of all, I change my sheet properties, get a bigger sheet, so then A2 again. And if I go file, import, uh, DWG, DXF, you can actually import the um, AutoCAD file or DWG. Um, just change here so the scale is 1. And hit apply OK, and it'll get placed in this sort of fashion. Uh, you can obviously get rid of the rest of the stuff, but you don't really need to. It's not, not really a necessi necessity. Uh, with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just only going to keep, I'm going to use the front open. Uh, I don't really want to use that one because not much information on it or visibles. So I'll use the front open. Um, so all I really need to do is click here. Um, I can control C, control V. What I'll do first. So 2018 onwards E3 series has this up button here, which is optimize graphic object. Um, so basically what that does is um, with AutoCAD and most DWGs, uh, a lot of these um, additional uh, lines uh, form multiples, I guess. Um, you know, they're broken down into rather than having, uh, I guess, an oval here, for example. Um, so what that does is it converts a lot of polylines into single lines, remove duplicates, etc. I'll click that there, I can click optimize all and click OK. So by comparison, um, that one should now be a single um, oval, uh, which sort of uh, essentially reduces the um, data take up for that particular component. Uh, not a huge deal, but once you've got um, a lot of components loaded, you know, especially if computing is a bit of an issue, um, it's a definitely a good way of, of minimizing and um, making sure uh, it's all sorted. So you can select them all, uh, you can actually go right click um, and copy, otherwise control C. And if you go to your new um, symbol or your model rather that you've created and you can do control V um, and you can scroll in, you hold down control and use your mouse wheel, you'll, you'll be able to zoom in and then you can place it as required. Again, there's a snapping, so if you want to deviate from the snapping, you can hold the control button, like so. Oops, great. And that's it. 
So one thing I've realized is some of these don't necessarily sit um, as they should. Um, but nonetheless, um, even though they've got a maximum supposed dimension, um, they can sort of deviate from them. So that line is, is a perfect example of how it sits outside of that. Nope, no, not so much. It looks like I've copied something over incorrectly. Great. I suspect I've moved it across. Let's just control set it a bit. And go back a few steps and see. Must have been as I'm moving it. There we go. Okay, so I actually moved that line. So again, I can uh, highlight it all, control Z, control C, um, go back to my model and control V. So unlike some other, um, I guess AutoCAD's a prime example, um, you know, at certain versions, you can only scroll back so many times. Uh, the good thing about this one is you can control C as many times as you need to, to, uh, to go back to where you do, to the point where you made a mistake. So um, now that I've got my graphics set in, um, I can actually normally go and find the, um, let me move that out for now. If I get the main um, box, I can go right click graphic information, I can give it a fill factor for example, or a fill color, I'll just give it this um, light gray for argument's sake, you can give it different patterns etc, I'm just going to leave it at that, um, and move this one up here again. So with these lines as well, um, again you can uh, add different attributes etc. Okay, great. Just uh, making a mistake with this one. Cool. So um, I guess here you can put other uh, text attributes. So if you want to have your device designation, which is probably the main one, um, if I go back to my uh, oops. device designation, it's probably the main one that I want. So I'll place that one in a strategic position so for example I want it to be uh, here it's nice and obvious and I'll change that size to say 6 mil probably a bit more appropriate size um, so the next thing I want is um, to put a technical data so that um, uh, for example, you can have a 6EP, uh, 1, triple 3, or whatever else you might want. want. Um, this is what's actually on the, the component. Um, anything that you want in there, um, it sort of comes down to what you want to have displayed. Um, so for example, if you wanted that same technical data, um, so the S7-1500, it's just a matter of placing that same, uh, where are we, technical data 1, and placing that attribute. And I'll place it, say, here. Cool. So I guess the next thing I want to do is insert the side view. So if I go File, oh, sorry, if I go um, Insert Model View, and I'm going to go the left. Um, actually, sorry, before that, I might do something else. So if you go right-click Model Properties, uh, you can change the uh, Z position. You can see here at the moment, it's just a flat pancake. Um, so we've got our outer diameter, so we just want to give it a depth. So if I go back to my um, uh, drawing, you can see here how it's 129 mil deep. So I can just change that Z size to 129 and hit apply. And now I've got a thick box um, like so. So if I go now and go insert model view left, uh, you can see that size is now appropriate. I can go back to this um, symbol, I can find the side view, and then I can add the appropriate side view. So I'll just get rid of these dimension lines. Um, and at the same time, I will optimize again. So again, I'll have control C, control V, control C, go back to my model. 
make sure I've got my side view selected. If I double click on it, control V, the only thing I want to do now is flip it. Um, and I can zoom in. Place it as I need to. So now insert model view, oop, insert model view and right, and I'll do the same thing. Control V. This one's easier because I don't need to flip it. Uh, so flip is to uh, if you if you want to flip it on the Y axis, you just press Y on the keyboard. X axis is X. Otherwise, you can press R to rotate it um, and then place it like so. Uh, so the next thing I guess is the step model um, as we just hinted before so insert step model I've got a step prepared already it's going to place it over the um, front view um, I could potentially rotate it or move it off center um, if need be and then um, here's where you can rotate it if it's facing the wrong direction Oops. Just uh, go back to insert step model, but if you have it set up correctly, anyways, um, it will just be the frontal view straight away, so it's pretty easy. Um, all you really need to do is press OK. You can see here the model shape's been added, and you can go back and forth as required. So if you double click, go back to the model shape, otherwise. Um, the front view. So I guess uh, that part is sort of defined. Um, the next thing we need to do is place the node positions. Um, the node positions are a little bit um, uh, tricky. Um, if you know where they are exactly, it's pretty easy. Otherwise, uh, defining them uh, is not too difficult, but you just need to um, align it with the graphic. Um, so again, in a similar fashion, you can do um, I connect from bottom and I can say I only need three of them vertically and I'll just leave them at say eight mil apart they're a bit too far apart but I'll place them here like so so if I place them here I can go right click <coughs> excuse me um, model properties and if I click my model pins, sorry, slot pins, you can see my three here. If I zoom in on this portion, um, a couple of things. So you can see uh, where they sit um, like that. And at the same time, uh, if I flip it here, um, you can see uh, where they sit um, as far as the bottom of it goes. So in this case, um, I want um, as much as these are slightly off center, I want them to be um, aligned with this hole. Um, and to do so, I just bring that down um, to the Z position that I want. So, for example, I think it's. Uh, oops, I forgot to select them all. If I select all of these and say it's a Z position of 110, oops, and click apply. And then you can see there it's gonna um, essentially it's gonna come out the bottom, which is kind of where we want it, anyways. Uh, this information is also used to calculate the lengths, so we want to have it um, up there, anyways. We can change our uh, max cross section, um, for example, two mil squared. Um, just want to have one y count uh, max, and the total max is uh, two. Uh, in case there's a deviation, uh, so that sort of sorts those ones. So the next ones have to sit in here somewhere um, for multiple reasons. Um, let me just uh, refer to the one I did earlier. Um, where are we? So place them just here. So, um, okey dokey. So before I make a mistake, I'm just going to pre-rename this one and paste the part number. 
or if you just type xcp 133-4 b-a-o-o model um, no spaces sorry um, the way the models work is normally m underscore and then the part number so 6ep 1333-4 uh, b-a-o-o oops Cool. So, um, like I said, so the connect from bottom. So that'd be this one in that case. No, I haven't. Actually, I place the connect all directions, and I change the. Um, let's just do that. So horizontal. I want them four mil apart, and then just. Four of them. I want them say eight mil apart rather. And place the first one here. Second section this one. So technically speaking, the ideal situation is if the DWG had these located. Um, it's not a huge um, consideration or issue, um, but if you do it accurately, it comes up pretty good, and obviously the calculations work out quite well. Um, it depends on what level of accuracy you're looking for. Um, I spaced them out a bit more. Uh, but otherwise you can play with them a bit manually just compare it I can actually split the windows like so and then uh, I collapse them and only open the two that I need So I can copy from that um, where they are. So with the nodes that I've used, um, I've just used some of the, um, I guess, um, you know, these are from below. I've just used the other ones. I'll redefine them in a second. Um, so it's kind of important with this one to do a position or a location of where they're connecting. Um, in this case, it will connect in any direction. So based on whatever the closest stuff work, whatever, it's going to go from there. So we don't necessarily want that to happen, um, but we can define that in the um, model properties. So if I go right click model properties, and then I'll um, select all of these, and then the connect direction is going to go to the bottom, hit apply. And you'll see that that symbol changes straight away. So we want them to connect um, directly from the below. So with that one again, um, you can move it uh, like you do in panel. Uh, right click, hold right click, and you can move. You can zoom in and out um, in a similar fashion. And left is left click is to rotate. So you can see here how my positioning is about right of the um, pin nodes. The only thing that I have to do is bring the Z position down um, from my memory. Two, three, four. Um, they are about seventy-eight mil. Nope. Sorry, that's halfway point. Um, they are get sixty-six if I know. Actually, no, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So that's pretty much the halfway point. Um. You can see that they're, they're in there. They're also inside slightly. Uh, the reason why I didn't do it in the surface, you want to factor in just that little bit more of length. Um, you can actually bring them all the way to the end if you wanted to, but you want to um, factor it in. Otherwise, if you have it sitting at the surface down the bottom, um, 
which would have been you know on this line uh, naturally that gets a little bit more complicated uh, so with these ones again I want to do the maximum of 2 mil squared um, 2 mil squared a minimum I want um, 0.8 and total maximum to be 2 and then one wire count um, cake bottom you can actually select um, these are going to be cage clamped um, and click apply and then OK. Cool. So I guess now we've got our uh, node points, we've got our model, we've got our um, step model, we've got our um, DWG side profiles. Next thing you want to do is the mounting um, information. So if we go to model properties, uh, we can click on shape, we can add. If I tick this one, lift more descriptions, I can scroll down and find the Cymatic S7 1500 um, mounting. Uh, which is the mounting type that I want. I click add um, and then with this one I just need to give it a position. So with this position um, it's just slightly um, below middle um, or slightly above middle. It is from memory again at 76. I'm just essentially drawing a line um, for that one anyways. Uh, we can change this as we go. I'll just do this for now and then uh, as we place it I'll show you how to manipulate it anyways. Um, Click OK. Oh, the other thing I want is the um, the depth. You can see that that position is currently on the surface. Also, want it 10 mil in. Um, 10 mil I used from this one. You can see the difference is almost 10 mil from the um, back to there. You can do uh, certainly you can do 9.7 if you want to. Um, I just did that 10 to make life easy. Uh, click Apply, OK, and then right click, Save the Database, and Yes. And now in my model, uh, you can see here that the um, that one's there. It's just gone to no entry. Uh, if I did it properly, I, um, model properties, um, the class is obviously where it gets located. Um, So that's all defined well. So I guess now I can go to my components and I can go right click new component. Um, the component name is 6EP, 6EP, 1, I should really remember, have remembered this by now. Um, one three 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 four b a zero zero. So three dash four B A um, zero zero zero. Unless I'm going crazy. Oh, I am going crazy. So I guess the next thing um, we want is the device letter code. The letter code is essentially that gets placed. Um, so for example, you know um, B one whatever it is. Uh, I think a lot of these are normally A. Um, you can have it whatever you want if you want. Um, you know. Power supply, PS1, Accenture. Um, so every time you place one, we'll go to the next number, but the uh, alpha sort of stays the same. Otherwise, you can change it manually. Uh, the letter codes can be three, um, three letters, anyways. So if I go back to my website, um, there's a couple other things you can realize. Um, there's, um, I guess, a description, um, product family, you know, a few of these other stuff, article number, etc. Um, so if I click next, I might just do PS for power supply. Um, article number is the same, and again, 6EP1323 4BA00, and then class. The class is the folder where it locates, so um, in this case, it's Somatic S7 1500. You can change if need be. The description I'll just copy and paste from here. Um, Main class is just electric. There's a few which you probably don't need to use. Um, then you can add attributes. So the technical description was one of them. Um, technical description, and it was the S7 1500. Um, any other attribute you want in there? So there's the EAN, for example. Um, which I can scroll down here. 
modify the EAN number. You know, you can populate your attributes as required. So weight, um, you know, the reason or the, the idea behind this is to minimize 0.736, uh, to minimize, I guess, manual handling. So 0.736, um, you can also have a hyperlink. Any, any attribute you can have, you can add them in there. There are some already in there, but obviously you can add custom attributes pretty easily, so that's pretty easy. Um, the other one, I mean lead time and stuff like that as well. It's pretty, pretty easy. Um, and I can drop down and I want... Previous symbol is the next one I want, um, and I can drop down, but I know it's going to be a 6 EP 1333 4 BAOO preview symbol, which is what I did, I believe, unless I'm got bad memory, which I do. Um, so once you're happy with the attribute structure, I mean, you can change this later anyway, so you can click next and completely new structure, and then edit and chronographically. So if I go to my component properties, um, I guess here I can type manually type in anything if I want to change any attributes or add some new ones, um, like I can do so pretty easily. Um, pretty easily. Um, in my, you can see my preview symbols already. The isolated code you can change, uh, pins, etc. Um, we can add, but at the moment there's no pins, so there's no. Um, it's all blank. So all I really need to do is find my symbols. I've got my um, main one, I'm going to put this as the main, I'm going to place the input and my output, uh, I need to scroll, change the sizing, <coughs> uh, input, output, and then I can put a preview symbol as well if you actually want that, um, you can have it in there as well should you need to. Uh, there are some situations where, um, which I might do for argument's sake, um, you've got your main schematic, I can double click that, um, file, import, image, place this image, resize, just draw it here, have a habit of drawing it nice and small, and place it there, right click, save the database, so if you make it um, save, or change, if you change it here and then you save it, if you go back to your 6EP that you've created, you can see here that one changes and it's got that um, symbol here. The other thing I realized is these are too uh, large. The um, device designation is too large. The S7, I guess, is probably okay, um, even if you want the 6EP or whatever you want. Um, but I can drop it out. So all I need to do is go to my IP, um, double click on this one, uh, change that to two, I might even make it narrow, hit apply, save the database, yes and yes, I'll do the same for the output, um, I might check it first, you can see now it's a lot smaller, it's a lot more appropriate, also I want to move that one so it looks a bit neater, um, input, that one should go up here, um, save the database, um, so you can uh, uh, sort of perfect it retrospectively, um, otherwise you can do as you need to. Um, you'll figure out a bit of a system, so you probably won't have too much back and forth. And again, you'd probably be using something and making a manipulation of it. So once I've done that one, uh, you can see here it's a bit more appropriately sized, it's a bit easier, um, and then we can go from there. So at the same time, the model's the same way. I can click on the model, um, which is down here. And I can click and drag. And I'll place the model for me. Oops. OK. So uh, the first thing I want to do is actually these pins. I, I want to um, sort these pins out. So if I go right-click, pin assignment, and I'll bring it out here. Um, there's a couple things um, in that. So we've got our one, two, three. Uh, these three, I can select them all. So uh, what I want to do is do a name and signal equivalent and exchangeability of these. So um, I'm just going to give this one 11. 
11, 11, and at the same time I want the L1 with the other one to be 11, 11, 11. Um, that one 12, 12, 12, 13, 13, 13. The reason why I'm starting at 11 is it has to be, um, um, I can't use between 0 and 10. Say a requirement as such. Um, so 14, 14, 14. 15, 15, 15. If these weren't defined, I could actually name the um, particular poles, but I've already done it in my schematic, so it transfers over. I can click it to make sure it's selected. Um, with this one, uh, the pin 3, the pin 3 is linked to pin 1. It's the same L+, plus, so I can go 16. Signal equivalent is going to be 14, because it's the same signal as 14, and I'll leave it exchangeable with 16. And then in 17, the signal is going to be the same as 15, and I'll leave that one exchangeable. So 12, 12, 12, 13, 13, 13, 14, 14, 14, 15, 15, 15, oops, yep, 16, 14, 16, 17, 15, 17, hit apply. So basically what I've done here is I've made sure a couple of things. Um, I've linked that one as per this schematic. I've linked one and three to signal. You can see here when I uh, click it, you can see that green line. It's a bit hard to tell in this uh, sense, but essentially what that is, is that one's connected to that one, that one's connected to that one signally. So whatever signal I put out of here is going to be the same out of there, same as that one and that one. Um, but what I've done by the exchangeability and the name signal equivalent, meaning that whatever's in here is the same as that one, that one, that one. So I've essentially defined that these three are these three, these four are these four. So whether I use the main schematic or I use the uh, individuals, they're still going to have the same um, thing in there. So it's going to make uh, life pretty easy. So it's a bit of flexibility. Uh, you can obviously opt to do just that one. You can opt to have just these. It's a bit more simple, a less complicated. Um, but I've done it that way, that way we've got full um, freedom, so to speak. Okay, I've just realized something. So with this one, as, as fantastic as it is, uh, there's no graphic for those ones. So I'm going to go back to the uh, model. And you can see here these ones don't actually have a symbol. It's just the, the, the green or the aqua color is the uh, node. But take away the node, there's no graphic there. So I'm just going to place that little circle um, like so. Again, if I double click it, I can place continually. So place that one, place that one. Press escape when I'm done. If I go back out, save the database. Click OK. I can go back to my 6EP component. Oops, did I save it to the database? Okay, I gotta save this one first. Um, let me just save that one. Yes. Okay. So with the model, you need to save the component before updating it. So you can see here now I've got those. So uh, you can have the um, pin names, or you can leave them out. I've just left them out for this one, so I want to keep them for those. Um, so uh, what I need to do now is assign that to that. So um, you can press this button here, which says pin assignment uh, model, symbol model. So essentially I'm going to pick, um, and I'll zoom in for that. I can pick L1, and then this L1, you can see the, oops, I missed. Uh, L1. This L1, you see the cursor change, N to N. Essentially what I'm saying is that this is what the symbol is, this is where it is in the panel. So it's relating to that one. Uh, the same as that one, 1 to 1, 2 to 2, and then 3 to 3. So you're actually realizing as well, you can see these Xs, they're actually changing. So it understands that that's actually what it is. Um, that's what those pins are, which makes life pretty easy. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll double up, um, just because I want to have, I'll bring that over so it's a bit closer. With these, it doesn't matter where they are as well. Um, all that is, is um, I guess, the structure. So it's not really a big deal where it's located. 
Um, so I want to quit that one as well and do L1 to L1, um, N to N, and then P to PE, and then the same for 1 to 1, and then 2, 3, 4. Again, I mean, if you had something similar, you just replicate it, so you don't have to define, but at least this way you can see the uh, the process of doing it all from start to finish um, to there. Okay, so I've essentially got that. You can see now um, the red dotted lines, uh, where they go to. So if I go right-click, save the database, and click yes. Uh, if I go back to my project now, let me just delete this out. I might delete that one out too. Just purge so you start from scratch. So in my components tab, um, in my somatic S7-1500, you'll see the 6EP is now there and that shows me that preview. It's not the right one. What do I call it? Um, I created this uh, 6EP, okay, that's what I called it. Six EP preview, okay. So I did a mistake, so re reverted to the default. But if I go, I mean, you can have that one anyways, but if I change that to the actual symbol, apply, save the database, and then, um, You can see now it's actually showing me the preview symbol. So if you don't define a preview symbol, it's going to go to the first schematic symbol. Uh, these all have um, images, um, but otherwise um, you can define your own. So with this one, when I default bring it into my schematic, it's going to place my first main schematic symbol where I can connect into it, etc. Um, otherwise, um, I can bring it, like, expand this out. And then I can select the, um, uh, say, the in input, and I can bring it in, um, and then go from there. So you can see I've got my PS1, PS2 um, for my power supply. Uh, if I bring my device tab, um, I can expand that out. And you can see here, uh, my PS2, for example, I can bring in that schematic symbol, um, like so. So again, for any of these, you can bring in the previous symbol, and then if you wanted the photo or something like that, you can do so. Now, like I said, so this is, um, I didn't set it up properly, uh, but anyways. So it depends if you want that or not. So I guess here we've got my PS1, PS2. If you wanted to rename this one to say, um, you know, A1 now. A1, oops, no exclamation mark. A1, um, you can do so. You can see they both change and everything else. Um, you probably realize now that that six would probably should move over a little bit. Um, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, so actually we'll do that now. So I want to move that over. If I go into my um, database editor, I bring in my um, input and then I can click here. I can bring both of these, if I wanted to hold shift, hold the control, move them over, and then right click, save the database, yes, yes. If I go back to my project now, you can see I've already placed it, but if I right click on the symbol, updating project, uh, you'll see that's actually moved that one across. So the same thing goes for the um, output. Um, so I guess this is sort of teething stuff that you do on the first one to make sure that it's all uh, as, as appropriate. Click that one, click that one, move it across, again hold control to do an um, alternate grid. Right click, save the database, yes, yes. And then if I go back and, and go right click, update in project, you'll see that moves over. Um, so I guess with this one, a couple things. Um, actually I'll place this, uh, if I go A1, sorry, PS1 and I'll place this one. So what um, is probably a good thing um, in this, um, there is a control. So if I connect a core here, I'm just going to go for argument's sake and then connect this one from here to here. 
and I'll apply um, say one and a half mil black. Um, if I attempt to connect from here, I'll just leave it blank for now. Um, if I attempt to assign a core to it, you'll see down the bottom it says maximum number of wires reached. So I've defined it here in this L1. Um, so even though that PS1 is the same uh, schematic, same component, uh, it won't actually let me um, duplicate uh, and put something outside of it. So it doesn't recognize these are two entities. Um, it's still understanding it's got one and they have the same sort of amount of restrictions as far as your um, cable uh, limits, etc. So um, I'll just connect these one to one. So I can use my multi connect tool. I can select all of these, uh, bring them out here, place, and I'll just hold shift to um, do a one to one. So that way one is connected to one. Um, <coughs> I'll give them some colors so it's a bit easier to define. So one red. Um, one grey, oops, a blue, and then say a white movie black as well. Um, so these ones the same sort of fashion. I guess I just don't need to. Uh, might not necessarily need colours or whatever you might need. Get there. And there we go. So I guess um, this is just a sample anyway, so you can connect them. This doesn't make sense. Um, but nonetheless, um, you can see sort of uh, how you implement it. So once I've placed it here, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is have it in a, um, <coughs> excuse me, is in a panel. So if I go to my sheets, uh, if you go insert new sheet, uh, select your panel, um, I've already got one open. Uh, I can click here this tab, the yellow one that says panel not placed. If I expand that out, it's going to bring me the components um, that are in the project, but there's no panel. And if I click on it, you can see the um, symbol here and the symbol there. So um, what I'll do first is I'll place one of these somatic mounts. Um, this one, for example, I'll place that one here. And then I'll also insert a duct. I'm just going to make a general one. If I click this button up here, insert cable duct. Um, and I'll just leave it generic and I'll place it there like so. So if I get this A1, I can click and drag. You can see it highlights because it understands it's got that same thing. And then it will let me place, um, has to, you can see with, when I move my cursor, it will snap onto that. Um, place one there and I'll place one on the other edge. Um, so you'll notice also my um, those red dotted lines that were showing up as I was moving things across. Um, you can see there. Um, that red is the exclusion zone, uh, which I'll probably mention how to do as well. Um, so it won't actually let me put that over there. You'll see it says um, yeah, invalid place. So you can see the red dotted lines that understands that they connect, they connect, um, same as these in the same sort of fashion. Um, if I click Control A and then go right click Panel Auto Connect. Um, they'll connect them um, as required. You can see the gray three. Um, blue four. Blue. So um, with that, uh, when I do my 3D, uh, in my 3D, I've got my step file. Otherwise, I've got my DWG, so the standard is just a block. If I click on that one, it's going to show me the DWGs for them. Um, not on the bottom, but I've got the sides. Otherwise, if I click my step, it's going to show me the step file. And you can see here as well um, um, the positions that I gave them. Um, they're sitting in. Um, it's probably a situation where they should be slightly to the side, but more importantly, I think they should be a little bit lower. Um, which we can adjust. That one's pretty much where it needs to be, give or take. Um, and then the mounting positions, um, pretty appropriate. Or rather, it looks like it's a little high. You can see the screen there. Um, so it needs to go, um, well, the center needs to go up slightly. And I need to move the um, nodes. So if I go back here to my project, pick up my model, and I guess it depends on how accurate I want it to be. 
a model properties. Um, I want my somatic to be a 78 for argument's sake. Hit apply. And I also want my model properties, I want these to be um, a little bit lower. Slot pins, I can get these for. And I want them on the 64. Right click, save the database. Okay. Save the database. Yes, yes. And then I can go to my model. I can expand this one out. Right click, update project. You will need to untick the um, step, tick it again, and then you'll see that the position's appropriate now. And you can actually see that screw um, is sitting in the thread, which is where we want it to be. That one's sitting in there nicely. And then these are sitting appropriately as well. So um, you see that probably almost go a little bit lower, but um, it depends on how, how high you want it, etc. So I guess um, you can see it's pretty easy. It takes a little bit of finesse, um, but then um, coming up with something, um, I guess once it's accurate, all the information's there. At any moment, I can go right click, jump to my schematic, and you'll bring me the schematic portion. Um, and I can go right click device properties and in the components so I can obviously check all that stuff but in my components tab I'll have all my attributes um, I can follow the uh, hyperlink um, and then otherwise I can add some more attributes etc um, I can add if I wanted to I could add the hyperlink and I could follow it um, if need be so um, you know, you can go directly and um, that way it's it's got it. So you can add it to the website, to the sheet, or you can hide it. Um, again, device properties, I can hide the hyperlink. Um, you know, all that information is there. Um, Shift F3 to clear the find um, gives you a bit of an idea. Uh, hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Uh, it gives you a bit of an idea of how to create a component. Um, the execution or the process will change based on your design process, you know, whether you go you know, um, I've just done it this way, so it's flexibility whether you're using one or two. Um, obviously, one being the easy one because you just drag it in and it places automatically. Otherwise, if you have the second, you'll obviously bring in your IP and your OP. Um, not like that. If you see, you can do it that way. You've added the new component for each time. So um, once you place the PS3, you go in your device tab, expand that out, and you get your um, output um, in there as well. So. Um, naming is obviously important, um, so it identifies, uh, if you give it a description, um, you know, whatever description information you do is going to help, um, and I guess if you're only going to do in this manner, if you're only going to design with individuals, um, this is a simple example, there's only these two ports, so to speak, you've had a few outputs, be it an Ethernet or a D sub or something like that, you'd have three, four, five more um, of these, so it's up to you whether you do one, multiples, um, or you can do both like I've done. Um, so hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. Um, I will, we'll, um, if you need this component, I can send it to you. Um, all I, if I send you this component, all you need to do is um, in your database editor, uh, open up each of these uh, symbols and for each one, save the database um, symbols. Same as the model, right click, save the database. So essentially adds that symbol of model into your database. And then once you're done with the symbols and models, um, you can go in here and, and save the component to the database um, at the end of it. So let me know how you go. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. And thanks for watching. Thank you.